I'll tell you right off the bat, I am not a speech maker. So if you came for a speech, uh, you might as well just put the plugs in because it's, it's not what I am. I am, uh, I am the uh, descendants of bards, storytellers, and minstrels. I'm an author. But I, I want to go back to the roots, why, what we all, why, why we're here. We have a desire. For some reason, something chose us to make thoughts crystallize in the form of words. I say, the story chooses you. Go back. Go back in your minds to, the, to whatever it was that you can connect to that fired up your imagination and made you want to create. Go back. You'll find that there was something, maybe one event, maybe more than one event, maybe a series of events that you put the brakes on and you thought, wow, that has meaning. I'll share mine with you. When I was just 10 years old, I got my first guitar. I was looking for an audience. I was so desperate, I wanted an audience. Well, I would play for uncles and aunts and all and charge them a dime, just like we all do. <laughs> We've done all of that, you know. <laughs> My daughter was a dollar, you know, for, for her. So, so, so what, what happened to me was when I was 16, just got my driver's license. Had had a band since I was in elementary school. We were pretty good. We were doing all the old... Creedence Clearwater Water Revival stuff and all the old Stone stuff and, you know, uh, Beatles, you name it, we did it. But when James Taylor came out with Fire and Rain, that changed my life because I thought, how can you say a novel? How can you, in, in just a few words, how can here's, you write a novel? Here's the point in my life that changed for me that made me know and realize that words are so powerful. Music is a powerful tool. Sharing those things, changing people's lives, it's immeasurable. I was 16 years old, found out that the hospital was a good place for an audience. They couldn't get up and leave. <laughs> so what do I do? I take my guitar, talk to the nurses, and they, they bring me in and, and take me from room to room, and I'm just playing everything you could think of. And day after day, I would do that. I was really getting the bargain. What happened was the patient started responding to the medication. Now, I was 16 years old. Doctors started saying, wow. And so they started charting. I would walk in. They would come alive. One day. One day, I walked in with my guitar. They said, we are going to take you into a room. But first, we want to prepare you. I'm a 16-year-old. I mean, I'm full of myself. I just want to play. Put me in front of them. I got it. They said, there's a little 10-year-old boy. His name is Billy Ferris. I will never in my life, I'll never forget this boy's name. And he said, he has Wilms cancer. It starts in the early embryo stage of life. What you are going to see is basically a skeleton with skin and a huge bloated stomach. Oh. Now, they tried to prepare me. I was 16 now. That didn't prepare me. But I walked in there and for, I don't know how, how I was able to do it. But I started, I launched into this song. And there was not much of a response. I went into another one. I went into the another. Now, this little boy had been there for two weeks waiting for his father to show up. But his father and mother were divorced. His father never came to see him. Somehow, this little boy's eyes opened. And he smiled. And he smiled. And one day he laughed. I went for two weeks solid. And he laughed and he laughed and he laughed. He had the most amazing, 
mystical blue eyes that I've ever seen in my life. And his eyes came alive. And then one day they called me and they said, can you get here quickly? I was working after school. I was, do you remember when there was bag boys <laughs> sacking your groceries and we used to take them out to the car? Mm -hmm. I did that. I got in my little Volkswagen. I was there. I walked in and they said, he's, he's dying. Now, I'm 16. I, I don't really understand that. I walked in in the room and the grandmother was on this side and the mother was on this side and they were holding his hands and they just let go. I walked over to him, cradled him in my arms and his blue eyes just locked, locked onto mine and he smiled the biggest smile ever and he died in my arms I left there with a whole different outlook in life I grew up I had nothing else in common with other 16 year olds from that day on you see it chose me it chose me I had to tell a story I saw the power of words. I saw what it could do. I saw how it could change lives. There's something magical about, about words. How you say them. How you present them. There's something magical about music. There's something magical about creativity. It's just... Again, it chooses you. The journey of a million miles Starts by putting on your shoes Whether you're just out for exercise Or stepping on a rocket to the moon